Do you want to take your deck from this to this to this? Stick around. I had this deck built less than three years ago. It's a fairly large deck made entirely of cedar, including the railings. The cedar was so beautiful at first and smelled so good, but it quickly turned gray and weathered after barely two years. Unprotected cedar will inevitably do this. Some people like the look, but I just think it looks kind of dirty. Now, while my first motivation for restoring this deck is definitely for the looks, there's another reason too, and that's the wasps. Yep, the wasps. They love having this huge supply of raw cedar that they chew on and use to build their hives. The lines you can see here are actually pieces that they've chewed away, and I have these all over my railings. All right, I'm ready to get started, but there's someone who doesn't want me to restore this deck. Yep, nothing but attitude here. The first step in restoring this deck is to clean it. I'll start by scraping and cleaning away some of this debris that's caked into the center joint because of the way my deck is built. Luckily, I planned ahead and picked up some knee pads at Princess Auto. For some reason, I feel like I'll be using them a lot today. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, pull out the pressure washer already, but I'm not going to use a pressure washer. I do actually own one, but I've always heard that pressure washers can do more damage than good on softwoods like cedar, and this was confirmed by my friends over at Osmo who recommended I avoid using one. And a big thanks to Osmo Canada for sponsoring this video. I often use their wood finishing oils, and today I'm excited to introduce you to their decking products. First up is this Wood Reviver Power Gel. They've put some thought into this and even included the scrub brush and handle in the package. This is a deck cleaning solution that contains oxalic acid, and it comes in a gel so it's easier to apply. It's supposed to reverse graying and restore the natural color tone of wood. Almost sounds too good to be true, but let's give it a shot. I'll start by lightly misting the area to be cleaned. Then start applying the wood reviver with the provided brush. I'm also using Osmo's telescopic handle, but I'll admit it was a little awkward on the railing, so I quickly dropped the handle and used the shorter grip. This stuff works fast and the results are dramatic. Ready? Watch it go from this to this, this to this. I painted on the cleaner using a thin coat all across the railing, then let it sit. After 20 minutes, I gave it a good scrub down using the scrub brush, then rinsed it off with the hose. You can see it working right before your eyes. It's pretty crazy. I was not expecting this. After cleaning all the railings, I moved on to the actual deck. I'll admit that this part was much more fun. Same process here. Wet the deck, apply the wood reviver, and let it sit for 20 minutes. Then scrub and rinse. You can literally see the wood getting cleaner and brighter right before your eyes. I was lucky because it was a cloudy day. Ideally, you don't want to do this in the direct sun, otherwise your product will dry too fast. If it does, just lightly mist it enough to keep it moist without rinsing away the product. It felt really good at this point to take a step back and see the difference it was making and that all this hard work was paying off, but I've still got some work to do. This deck has never been stained, but the mistake I made is not finishing it the very first year. Now you should never apply a stain or finish on a brand new deck. Ideally you want to wait at least three months to let that new wood fully dry so it'll take on the stain. But try not to wait three years like I did. As the deck started to dry, it was looking so much better already. No more water stains, no more grey, just bright clean wood. In 48 hours I'll be able to start staining it. Or maybe not. Less than a day later, it rained. Then it rained again the next day. And the next. Eventually, the sun finally came out and dried the deck for a full 48 hours, which means I can finally get started on the decking oil. To protect the deck, I'm using Osmo's decking oil. It's weather and UV resistant and has a microporous finish that won't crack, peel, or flake over time. I chose a color called Garappa, but I've also got some clear oil too, and I'm going to mix them together. Now, the colors have UV protection, but the clear oil doesn't. I personally prefer lighter colors, but I still want the UV protection, so Osmo recommended that I create a 50-50 mix to get a slightly lighter color without sacrificing protection. It's really important to stir the oil well. All the pigments are usually at the bottom of the can, so you want to make sure to mix those in. I can reuse the pail from the wood reviver to create my mix.
Osmo sent me their decking brush set, which includes a detail brush, as well as a floor brush, a handle, and a tray with extra liners. I'll start with all the vertical surfaces first and finish with the floor last. I figured it would be best to start with the detail brush in the corners and hard to reach spots, then follow up with the floor brush. This didn't really feel comfortable to me, so I ended up switching over to a regular paintbrush, only to realize later that Osmo's floor brush with handle is actually designed to be used without the handle on the smaller, less ergonomic areas, and probably would have been a lot easier than using a regular paintbrush. Anyhow. You want to go with the grain and apply a thin coat methodically, one slat at a time, using a natural stopping point if you can. If you're wondering how I did the outside of the railings, well, here I am. Using a ladder, I could work on the Anyhow. first few slats on the bottom from the outside, then finish the rest of the slats by reaching over the railing. Once all the railings were done, I started on the deck itself. I would first go up the ladder to get the exterior edges, working one small section at a time so the stain doesn't have time to dry out, and then also use the detail brush to go around any obstacles like post anchors. I could then grab the floor brush and apply oil to the floorboards, again being very systematic and going with the grain one board at a time. I actually realized that the floor brush fits under the railings, so no need to run up and down the ladder to get the exterior edges. Now I'll admit, the railings are the most tedious part of this whole process, but if you only have the deck to refinish, it's actually kind of fun. The Osmo decking brush makes it super easy to apply. I didn't even need to use a smaller brush to get in between the slats. That being said, I did spend a full 12 hours applying the first coat. Yep, 12 hours. But the floor itself only took a couple of hours to do. And really, that's the most satisfying part of this whole process. After the first coat was done and barely had 10 hours to dry, it unexpectedly rained. A lot. And then even more. When it finally dried out after a couple of days, I inspected the deck for any white spots or blotchiness, but I didn't see anything to be concerned with. The stain looks kind of thirsty, but that's normal after only one coat. And so I got to work on the second coat. Again, starting with the railings and finishing with the deck. Rest assured that the second coat goes a lot faster than the first coat. You can already see the color getting much more rich and fully saturated. What a difference it makes. No more dull gray wood, no more stains and water spots, just a beautiful deck that looks like new again. This was so worth it. But guess what? 24 hours later, it rained again. But the good news is look at how the rain puddles on the surface with the decking oil repelling all that water. Be sure to check out the links below for all the products I used to refinish this deck. Hope you enjoyed this video and here are a few more I think that you might like too. Thanks for watching, until next time, see you soon!